Atwell's Log, September 9th, 1940. I've been at my current post for 10 years. It's exceptional. The reason I'm still here is that we're still at war. We're still involved in various wars, including our long-lasting conflict against the Japanese. This war has gone somewhat cold, though. The new president is a bit more reluctant to send ships directly into Japanese territorial waters. He's concerned with how news about our ships getting hit by mines gets received back home. This means that for now, our fleets are positioned to blockade Japan. This puts pressure on Japan and makes it look like we're doing something, without the risk of losing ships to enemy mines. Intel indicates that the Japanese are prepared for a blockade and will be able to hold out for at least a few months. We'll just see how long they can keep up with being blockaded. Today's video is sponsored by Graphene X. Graphene X is one of the very few brands that I actually wear myself. They make all sorts of advanced sports gear slash shirts. And I personally own both the long sleeve and short sleeve t-shirt as well as the all-rounder polo. And I've also recently backed them for the all-rounder pants. What I really like about the clothing is that it is multifunctional. You can use, for example, this polo both as a workout shirt as well as a, an everyday shirt. It's made with a graphene material and because of that it um, is extremely bacterial resistant, so you don't smell. Um, I can wear this shirt <laughs> for a week if I would want to, and you just don't smell it. Um, of course, with two kids, you do stain every now and then, but that's a different issue. Now, the graphene inside it also makes it really suitable for sportswear. Um, recently, I went on a ruck, so hiking with a heavy backpack, wore the long sleeve uh, shirt, and um, my jacket that I wore over it just didn't get wet. Really, really good material that they get. You got all sorts of different projects, sorry, different products, jackets, uh, hoodies, sweatpants, pants, and of course, different items for women. If you add the stealth code at checkout, you get 10% discount or hit the link in the description. This is a brand that I use myself and I fully support it. I really like these guys. I really like the stuff that they wear and that they make, and I highly recommend you check them out. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to episode 15 of the US 1930s campaign. Or, well, we started out in the 1930s, it's actually 1940. About two years have passed since the last incidents. And I've basically been hitting next turn, next turn, next turn. The Japanese have been seriously thinned by the Russians, and I suppose that works both ways. I have simply parked my fleet in Northeast Asia, and I'm now blockading them. And finally, it seems that it's paying off, because a heavy cruiser is escorting a couple of their transports. Puerto Rico, Norfolk and Mekon are out there to intercept. Now, intercepting is a double term here, because I have the new interceptor class. I have the Norfolk and Mekon, both of said class. The only ship that has some flaws is Norfolk itself. Uh, Puerto Rico is perfectly fine. These things can do 37 knots. I have to be a bit careful here not to immediately eliminate Naishi from the board, because if I do so, then there's not really going to be an opportunity to hit at the transports. So I need to be able to take down the transports first, and I think the fairly rapid-fire 7-inch guns on the Interceptor class are the exact ideal weapon for this. So, Puerto Rico, um, don't, don't instantly murder the enemy heavy cruiser but uh, proceed to murder everything else. The Alaska class is really well suited to the job, whatever uh, I'm targeting in this mission, because I have the 12s to take out the heavy cruiser. These reload in 18 seconds. I have the 5s to take out the transports. They're not quite in range yet, so let's turn the ship a little closer. Then we got a little, well, little-ish interceptors. These sport 7-inch guns on the bow, and as for the rest, they have a couple of fives. Um, yeah, they got a five on the wing, a five on the stern, and another couple of fives on the wings. And for short range conflict, we got two inch guns all over the place. These ships were initially designed to start taking on threats such as cruisers from, I believe, the German Empire back then. 
because they were simply too fast. They were uncatchable. And with this new class... Oh, that's a kill. Uh, with this new class, we're probably going to see just how fast they can get to their target. Although they will not be faster than Puerto Rico's ridiculously good shells. So they'll not really be able probably to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to make too much of an impression. A flash fire on a transport. Not a good idea to arm your ship. I mean, yeah, there is something to be said for it, but... It... Ooh, it does have some issues. Uh, you're gonna start at the back. You're gonna kill that. Fair enough. That was another 12 inch for 36,935 damage. Ugh. Come on. I was really hoping for some big clash with the Japanese Empire, but we're seemingly just not getting that. So I thought, you know what, let's just murder some transports. Seeing as the Japanese appear to be either too busy with fighting the Russians, or they're simply hiding out behind all of their minefields, which they've deployed in or around essentially every port. So as long as I'm just... Oh. As long as I'm just in the... Um, let's say standoff position where I am, I can still blockade their field, I can still blockade their port, and at the same time not suffer any chance of being hit by a mine. Now, Norfolk, let's go. Pull ahead flank. How about you fire the guns? There we go. Is this heavy cruiser just launched a salvo of torpedoes from, I think, the port launcher? It might try the same thing from the starboard launchers. So, let's make sure we can whack this guy very quickly. Puerto, turn to port so that we get closer to the target. Don't have a speed yet. We haven't yet identified the ship. We should be able to do so fairly swiftly. And at that point, the Norfolk at flank speed, 37 knots, is fairly inevitably going to close the distance really quickly. Well, <laughs> I say that. And I'm completely wrong, because Naishi is doing 38.9 knots, which makes it a really heavy, expensive cruiser, uh, 112 million. Mine are 64 million. Their guns are only 6-inch guns, so yes, we can have the whole heavy cruiser, light cruiser debate in the comment section if you guys so desire. Um, I, for one, am not particularly impressed with the Naishi class. It's basically... It's basically a 15,000 ton destroyer. Just with bigger guns and a bunch of torpedoes and a lot of speed. And the faster you make a ship go, pretty much exponentially more expensive the ship is going to get. So this is why these things are so ludicrously expensive. Don't fire AP, fire HE. Even semi-ballistic is probably going to bounce off of this thing. Yeah, 2.7 in superstructure. Plus 142. So it looks like this Japanese ship is just going to run away. The torpedo launchers are ready. I'm not even sure why the ship is running away. I mean, I understand that it has completely failed in its mission. It has not been able to save a single transport, but then again, the odds weren't exactly in its favor. So, yeah, it was never going to win this fight. But it looks like Naishi unless it turns, is going to win this fight. Well, win. Is going to survive this fight. Let's turn the ships around and let's go and find a different convoy. For now, this has been um, a bit of interesting hunting, but beyond that, not too much. In the meanwhile, in the North Sea, I'm causing um, some accidents. And yes, I'm say causing, because I have a bunch of submarines out here. These submarines are deploying minefields, and these minefields and the fact that these ships are set to unrestricted warfare means that sometimes friendlies, neutrals, basically everybody, get caught in the crossfire. So what I'm doing here is essentially picking a fight with the British, because every time you cause one of these incidents, your relationship crumbles a bit. So I'm trying to provoke the British into a fight, because they still have 196 ships, including 12 battleships, and I'm eager to see how mine measure up against theirs. Now, with the additional uh, submarines that I have here, 
and I have a lot. The whole port of Helgoland is just one massive submarine fleet. Um, I cannot even send them out in bigger task forces than five, I think. Yeah, whatever. Everybody, here. We're going to make one enormous wolf pack. And let's see just how much <laughs> trouble we can stir up. Uh, I think that the moment that Germany leaves a port, it's going to get hit by a mine. I still don't know exactly how mines work. I just know that they're fucking annoying. Um, what I can see here, for example, with the mine laying radius is 900. Okay, great. Mine laying radius is 60. Okay, cool. Helgoland. Mine laying capacity, zero. Even if I park submarines in that port, mine laying capacity, zero. So I don't understand because these are submarines that are capable of deploying mines. Um, these guys, the S20 and SS21, have 12 mines available to them. What I could do is just throw together a really small destroyer that does nothing else but deploy a ton of mines. You don't need to do this with anything bigger than a destroyer because it simply doesn't need to be that big. It doesn't need to be particularly quick either. Um, range is something that could be helpful. Give them diesels, oil three. Here, mines. I have the advanced man laying five. I'm also wanting them to be mine sweepers and anti-submarine warriors. Give me an advanced tower. It's essentially a tin can. That's all I'm building, just a big tin can, capable of deploying some mines. These are the Mark Fives, okay. Mm. Let's see if we can make a couple of dual barrel turrets. I'm probably gonna need a bigger boat. And seeing as I have a fairly healthy budget, why not? Actually, can we make this a Fletcher? Like a Fletcher-esque? Is that a modern destroyer? It's not a destroyer leader, I think. Let's go with the modern destroyer standard. You're gonna go with diesels, you're gonna go with oil, you're gonna get your nice little tower. Which, if you hold control, you can also put down there, in case you're so inclined. Uh, you don't have to put it up here. I mean, it, it works. It just makes the bow, well, fairly heavy. So, dual barrel, dual barrel. You're going to get your funnels. Come on. You're going to get a secondary tower. We're going to push that little ways back. You're going to get a 5 inch and a 5 inch. You're going to get... Oh, we're going to need to go with a different barbed here, otherwise this will not fit. There. I had the very small one, that's why I didn't fit. 5 inch, 5 inch. And then I need a couple of torpedo launchers or the whole thing doesn't want to get built in the first place. Now these are the biggest ones that I can build. So... Engine efficiency is 300%. Giving the... <laughs> giving this thing a range currently of 45,000 kilometers. That's uh, substantial. But I don't think we're quite going to get there. Here, triple launcher. Um, whatever. I have a, a huge naval budget. Let's just make these things fairly advanced. Unbalanced rudder, super steering, some barbette armor, double bottom, reinforced bulkheads. One, two. Radar, yes, please. Mines, all of it. Anti mine sweep. Depth charges, range finder, coincidence. Sonar three. More recon. Ooh, we're one ton. Okay, whatever. Don't don't bring the radio. Better turret rotation. Better auto loaders. Scroll this down a little bit. I don't need that much. Bulkheads to flank, yes. Single bottom. Uh we're looking at a fairly high roll issue. I can fairly easily balance that out. And if I make the ship a little sleeker, I can still get really good engine efficiency. So let's say minus 10. Minus 10%. Standard crew quarters. Oh, that doesn't fit. Whatever. Cramped crew. Sorry, boys. You're going to have to hot bunk. I simply cannot make anything else work on this thing. Uh, superstructure, give me like half an inch. Yeah. Problem is that the bow is a little heavy, and there's not really an easy way to fix that. Well... 
It's gonna be less Fletcher-esque, that's for sure. But this should make the bow less heavy. What's heavier? This is 32 tons, this is 10, this is 64. We're still bow heavy, but not as much. Um, just put a bit more on the stern, it'll be fine. <clears throat> Alright, so these are the uh, Fletcher-esques. <clears throat> that's a word. The Fletcher-esques. And we're going to be building a couple of these just to mine the shit out of Germany. Because I can. I think this could also be a fairly interesting way of getting a whole bunch of, uh, let's say, arguments with the rest of Europe. Because I still need to pick a fight with France in order to complete the objective of winning from every country once. Let's see, everybody's going to go to Boston, and from there we're going to set sail for Europe. The only problem that I do foresee with this tactic is that I might run to my own mines. Which would be less than ideal. But we'll just have to uh, cross that bridge slash beat that mine when we get to it. A few months later, the Chinese are back. This is round three, four? I don't even know. Anyway, um, they're once again threatening me. I said, fuck you, and they decided to immediately turn to war. This is fine, but they're probably immediately also going to get turned into ash because they don't have a navy. So I'll instantly blockade them, and I'll instantly start gaining victory points. And meanwhile, the Japanese continue to harass my ships with submarines. A lot of them don't come home, but they are capable of eliminating at least some of the, um, well... Maybe not eliminating, but at least damaging some of my ships. Here's another I-52. Let's auto-resolve this guy into the ground. Yep, you're dead. Um, <laughs> great. Another German ship has been lost. Oops. Sorry. Let's see. How's the submarine thing going on here? Oh, they're all single groups. Right. All right, you're going to go to the middle of the North Sea. Um, we got three guys unrestricted. I don't know. Mine Dover. See if the British pay attention. And there are so many ships <laughs> moving around here that I barely know who's doing what. Anyway, um, my shipyards are capable of building these really big 145,200 ton ships. So I think, especially considering that I have access to the 20 inch Mark III, we're going to be building some snipers. Some really, really big snipers. I already have accessibility to the... Not the Louisiana... Texas. Texas with the 20.9 inch guns. She's pretty good, Texas. I haven't seen her fight yet, but I'm quite happy with this design. The issue, however, is they're triple barrels, and because of that, they generally are not that accurate. They're just taking that little debuff from accuracy. So what I'm going to do is try and put a 20 inch on the smallest possible platform that I can get. Well, I'm a bit torn. One side goes smallest possible platform, the other side goes, no, we're going to go with the biggest possible platform, at least something really wide, so that it has the biggest uh, stability factor for the ship. So let's see what a 95,807 ton ship can do. We're going to go with a, oof, ideally a fairly small secondary tower, but a modern tower 6 gives me 12 long range back, uh, accuracy, this is only 9.5. Base accuracy plus 20, plus 22, but this thing is in fairly large. No. Modern tower and secondary 3. 25 aiming speed, 20 base accuracy, this is fine. Okay, standard crew quarters, you yeah, know, the whole shebang when it comes to the propulsion section. Now, the specialty of these ships is to hit something at extreme range, because I just researched the Radar Rangefinder 3, which gives me another 60% long range accuracy bonus. This gives you 55, this gives you 45. So the, the change is not that massive, but every bit helps. Stereoscopic Rangefinder, um... Yeah, defense power against submarines is going to be useful. Citadel, anti-flood, anti-torp 2. There. Ideally, the ship 
just does not get shot at because she's going to be firing from so far away. <clears throat> so, 20 inch dual barrels. Two, two, and two. But I'm going to make these as long as I possibly can because that way they'll get a really good accuracy bonus. So that at, let's say, 15,000 meter range, I'm looking at a 4% accuracy. If you reduce that, you're looking at 3%, sorry, 2.4%. Uh, so yes, this helps, but there's a trade-off. Because my reload is 171 seconds. And if I massively upgrade them, it's going to be almost 3 minutes. So we're going from, th sorry, it's almost 5 minutes. We're going from 3 minutes to 5 minutes. So we're going to have to push that down again. Uh, now we're back to about 3 minutes. If we get a better crew, we should be able to do even better. Let's see, how fast are these things? 28 knots. Hmm. It's not really quick. Ugh, these American funnels need work. You can't even stack two Mega Force next side by side? Good lord, fine, I'll use two threes then. There we go. Now, as these things are going to be loading a lot of the time, let's go with the biggest secondary I can get, which is the 8-inch. Oh, come on. Don't be a bother. There we go. We're just going to have to manually rotate these. Put them on the ship. There. I want to also make these as big and as long as they can. So we're going to go with 8.9s. So we're going to go with 20, well, 17% longer barrel. The game is not strictly happy with me right now. That's fine. I'm not strictly happy with the game either. Um, you're going to point outwards. Turn mirror mode off. I'm just going to have to point flat outwards so that I can actually deploy these turrets. As stupid as that is. This is such a weird ship. But if this thing works... I mean, a 24 kilometer range on an 8.9 inch gun. What's not to like? And we're still not done upgrading, of course. We can still boost that. Two powder three. Um, I've seen Brother Monroe's frustrations with the amount of overpens that you get. And I saw his Yamato video where he got an 18 inch shell just doing um, partial pens on a ship that it should easily cut right through. So I don't want to get too much pen, because there seems to be an issue there. That means that we're going to have to go with either semi-armor piercing, which at 15,000 meter range has 40 inches of armor pen and almost no chance to bounce. Or we're going to go full HE massive kill. Uh, at 15,000 meter range you get about 13 inches of HE pen. I think AP is the better option here. So we're going to go with increased AP. Uh, this is going to stay with incendiary. We're going to go with super heavy shells. If I go over light shells, my reload drops to 150 seconds. And my pen is still 39 inches. So let's say a ship shows up that has, oh, I don't know, 20 inches of belt armor plus 150%. That's going to be fairly difficult to pen. At 15,000, that is. This should make that a little easier. All right. Now, when it comes to the secondaries, I mean, the other than the, the, the secondary primaries or whatever you want to call these. Let's go with a couple of... Wow, maybe not a couple of four-inch guns. Because they don't fit anywhere. What can we fit then? Three-inch. The thing is, if this ship opens up with her 3-inch battery, then something has managed to slip by everything else. Which would be a fairly bad situation. But whatever. Yeah, that's good enough. Make these as long as possible. Make these as big as possible. <clears throat> and now they fire out to 11.4 kilometers. I'll take it. 11.4 kilometers. Cool. Secondaries are going to be firing, I think, a mix. Because at 10,000 meter range, these sh shells still... 10,000 meter... Yeah, they got 13 inches of pen. 
You can pretty easily cut right through a cruiser with that. So let's do that. When it comes to my accuracy, I have um, some pitch and roll, but my beam means that I get a more stable firing platform. If I increase my draft, I think it's going to get worse. Yeah. If I decrease my draft, it does get slightly better, but you're sacrificing the cruise speed bonus. Um, oh, then I get one and a half. Wow. What if I go to the minimum? That's not even the minimum. Minus 22. I get 13% base accuracy. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. If I'm maneuvering, I don't even notice. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do that. This is such... Such a weird ship. Okay. Um, what else are we going to do with this thing? Do we need an RDF? Not strictly, but whatever. Superstructure, 4 inch. Main belt, 14. 4 deck, 8 aft. Oh, that's the belt. Ah, whatever, we got displacement. Uh, aft deck, 7. 4 deck, 7. Superstructure, 4 is fine. 20 inch there. Inner deck, 3209. This is fine. Off to weight, uh, fair, uh, sorry, front weight offset is 0 0.8. It's not stellar, but... Meh. Can I get more range, please? Because this thing does not go anywhere. That's a bit of an issue. 16,000 kilometers only. Yeah, I'm saying only. That's because this draft makes it really difficult to get a lot of fuel aboard. Um... Let's sacrifice a bit of superstructure armor. There we go. If I pull in the main gun here slightly... No, I want this to be a 360 degree turret. So I don't have to go from this side all the way to that side. If I'm looking over my shoulder with these guns. Now, there was still a request out for these things to be called Montana. Not strictly these ships, but... You know, somebody wanted a Montana class, so here you were. And these Montanas are probably going to be completed in three years or so. So that means that by 1943, 1944, we're going to be getting these new 20-inch sniper guns. Build time. I'll take three of these. Uh, Montana. <clears throat> 31 months. No, oh, that's not bad. It's really not bad. It's two and a half years. I'll take that. In the meanwhile, there's yet another convoy, if you want to call it that. The Cincinnati, New Haven class, fully upgraded in 1939 specs. It's going to go up against the Russian cruiser Novik in one transport. This is going to be a tiny battle. Good to end the episode with. I hope I can catch the transport before I catch the cruiser. You know the drill. Eliminate and then switch to the other target. That's the cruiser. Hello, what you got? Six? 5.5s? Five is that it? Yes, that is it. And you got two torpedo launchers to back it up. This thing is awful. Take me over there. There is the transport somewhere back there. I wasn't even aware I was still at war with the Russians. That's your prime target. 25 kilometers out. Can't hit that yet. Exchanging fire. I just want to mull this cruiser a little bit, so it's going to be easier to kill next time. I mean, after we sink the transport, they'll re-engage. Turn, because they're probably launching torpedoes at you now. Accuracy is pretty awful. Turn again. Secondaries activating. Two-inch guns. Yep, there we go. Wow, these were launched a while ago, or they're really slow. Gotta love how they're just abandoning their their main protectee. <laughs> Cincinnati at times five speed. Pew, 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 pew. 
You're not even trying to hit the same ship, are you? Just do HE. How much are you paying for that? 69 million? Why? Oh, it's blisteringly quick. It's 39 knots. Yeah, that would explain it. Stereoscopic rangefinder 5, stereo sonar 3. Right. Cool ship. Sad it's only doing donuts. Let's go for the transport, because that's the real prize. Boom. That might instantly finish off the transport. Yep, done. Alright, let's go deal with this disco boat. What you doing, Novik? <clears throat> More importantly, why are you doing it? Absolutely no armor. Three and a half inch main belt plus 140%, so let's be generous and say eight inch. I cannot pen that with HE, but AP can definitely do it. And we're firing Capitalistic 2, which is why they got such high pen values. Flooding. You just torped me. Gotta be somewhat careful with this guy, because those two torpedo tubes that they have, those duels, they reload pretty quick. They're not fun to play around with. Because just when you've closed the distance, the other torpedoes are ready. Look, what the fuck? This is a regular crew. I'm not sure if they're warming up the gun barrels or something, but this is not even in the same area as the Novik. Like, you're missing the target by three kilometers at a total range of four. Come on. At least make it look like you're trying. I'm not sure what the Novik is doing either. What's with these guns? You're embarrassing. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Why are you shooting the ocean? I am cutting this really quite close though, by the way. Because at this range, if they do launch torps, I'm going to have a very short amount of time to actually try and dodge those. Please go to full speed. What the fuck? Oh my god, fix your shit. Please destroy the torpedo launcher and I'd be very inclined to just go right next to it. So that my gunners might actually be able to hit something. What the fuck? This has to be some other bug. They just torped me again. I got four left. If these guns would actually be doing something useful, I would probably have already killed the target by now. Because it would be ablaze. Fully ablaze. Okay, range. 1.3. Fuck them up. I know it's fast. I know it has, like, a 93% maneuver debuff. But, please. Do something useful. Let's go AP on the secondaries. 1.8 kilometer range. I still can't pen jack shit with that. Well, at least we're doing something. That's refreshing. Now we're shooting over here. Looks like we're finally actually dealing some damage with these two inchers. Boom. Look at that. Now it's fully locked in. And now it's just wrecking the Novik. Easily. HE, just burn it down. Bulkheads, maximum. Just means we're going to have to hit it a few more times. Does it have to do with time acceleration? No. Not strictly. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. And as I promised the Chinese Empire, I have blockaded them once more. We haven't actually exchanged fire once. We haven't received any victory points. We haven't lost any victory points. So I don't know exactly what these guys are planning, but well, we're at war again. And considering the Chinese Empire has five ships, I don't think it's going to be that much of a hot war. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for the next.